everyone. My name is Cheryl Vito. Today we're going to be talking about the IND in a CTD or ECTD format. This is a pretty interesting subject for me. I started in Phase 1 development, so I'm very familiar with INDs. And as you all know, while you're taking this class probably, as things are changing. So today we're going to talk about an overview of the Common Technical Document, or CTD, how and why it came into existence. We're going to describe the electronic CTD and basic tools for electronic CTD implementation. We're also going to talk a little bit about style guide and why style guides are important for uh, ECTD implementation. And we'll then map the contents of the entire traditional IND to the CTD format. We'll tell you what you need, where you need it, what you don't need, and when. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the CTD itself. Why did we go to a common technical document? Well, basically what happened was quite some time ago, a lot of the different global regulatory agencies realized there was a need for standardization in the format for all the documents that are being submitted for global studies and submissions. Companies certainly recognized this because they were doing a lot of the work more than once for the same drug, for the same type of marketing applications just over the course of submissions to different countries. So the CTD, the whole process was striving to produce a single set of technical requirements for the registration of all different types of drug products. This was intended to streamline the development process and to reduce industry preparation time for global submissions. It also provided a platform for more consistent review because everybody was looking at a similar format. And it also helped to facilitate electronic submissions because everything is sort of going in the same direction, working in the same format and the same granularity. So basically what happened was uh, the International Conference on Harmonization was a conference that was put together by regulatory authorities from the EU, Japan, US, and additional experts in the pharmaceutical industry you know, all over the globe. Some countries are sort of observers of ICH, but they typically will follow ICH even though they weren't part of the whole ICH conference. And that would be like Canada, Australia, Switzerland. There are a few other countries as well. So the CTD itself, just a brief overview of it, it's a, it's a modular type of format. It is very, very organized. It's very logical. It goes from high level to very detailed in its flow. But it's very inflexible or standardized. In other words, everything that gets submitted is sort of done in the same format in the same way. And you don't change it. Things go in a certain section. There are a few exceptions which we'll talk about today. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to generate a submission over the life cycle of your product that will be the same for just about any submission you want to make. Now one thing that's important to remember is CTD applies to format only. I can't stress this enough. When I talk about writing documents, when you write a document it has very little to do with CTD format. You're still going to supply whatever documents you need for your IND or your marketing application. Whatever submission you're doing, the same documents apply. It's just how they are basically organized or formatted within the submission itself. So basically the names and location of the information changes, but you still have to follow the regulations and you still have to submit the same information. All the guidance documents still apply. Nothing changes there. And it's now this format, which is exactly what it is, is a format, is required in the US, EU, Japan, Canada, and Australia. Now one thing you do have to do is you must use CTD numbering. You can add in subheadings, but you cannot add in any additional numbering. So the current headings that are there should be used. You can just add subheadings underneath those current CD numbered headings. Now you don't delete sections that aren't used in the IND because remember this is going to be a submission building a life cycle over your product over the entire time that you're, you're generating data for this particular product from the beginning pre-IND all the way up to your NDA or BLA submission or whatever submission, whatever marketing application you're making. So if you're not using a certain section, in the CTD format, which you'll see for the IND, there are uh, numbers of, of sections and modules that we're not going to be using initially. You just put no information available at this time. And typically headers longer than level 5 headers are not recommended. That's pretty standard anyway for regulatory documents. So if you have something that's got you know, four dots and five numbers, that's about as far out as you want to go. Now that being said, I've seen them longer than that. I've seen subheadings that drill down pretty, you know, pretty big pretty long subheadings. But generally, we don't recommend anything past level 5. 